Okay then, thanks for tuning in on Wayne's Electrical for another boombox video. What we're going to be looking at then in this one is quite a sizeable boombox. Okay, I wouldn't mind betting back in the day this one was quite expensive. Uh, yes, it's got all sorts of various features and functions and goodness knows what else on it, and toys and tricks and functions and uh, you know, chop it this way, change it that way, manual auto, inputs, outputs, uh, tape, types, uh, track search. It's got quite a lot on it, okay, including a four band radio, so how about that? What we're going to be looking at then, uh, before I start, I'm just going to say that I'll normally allocate... 30 minutes per boombox, okay, but this boombox is so big, so many features on it, it'll be like, it'll be a bit like trying to fit two litres of water into a one litre bottle, okay, it is just not going to go. So I might have to do a double on this one, that being an hour, okay, you know how long it is, it is because uh, it's already loaded, I don't, because I'm just starting out, aren't I, Come, you know. So, we'll try to get it in under an hour, but like I say, there's so many features and functions on this one, I've got to discuss them all, because if I leave anything out, I'll either get corrected on the comments box, or someone will say to me, well, what was that button? You didn't discuss that button. So, everything's got to go into the video. Okay. Don't forget, this is full high definition, 1920 by 1080p on Wayne's Electrical. And, uh, yes. So, the boombox we're going to be looking at, then, is uh, a really well-known one. Okay. And that is the Sharp GF777. Okay or Sharp GF777, whichever way you choose to say it. Feast your eyes on this lo little lot of speakers. There we are. Okay, that is a flipping sizeable boombox, that one. Like I say, when that was new, I wouldn't mind betting that was pretty expensive. Now, as much as I would like to be the original owner of it, I'm not. Okay, I would have been quite young you know, still in school when when that was on sale. So, you know, I'm starting to show my age a bit there. But, it would have been expensive when that was on sale. And, uh, yes, if I had to save up and buy that, it would have been, you know, I would have been saving an awful lot of years my pocket money to buy that, and I probably would, never would have. So when that came up for sale, okay, all these years later, I had to grab it, okay. Uh, admittedly, it's not the best condition one. Okay, when you pick it up, or the case on it sort of creaks and goodness knows what else. Uh, yeah, when the uh, courier delivered it, uh, I, I, I don't know, I didn't hear the door knock or something. So, when he didn't throw it over the garden gate, but uh, he sort of carefully picked it up over the garden gate, lowered it down, and then, well, he let go of it, basically. I don't know whether that damaged the side of it or what it was, but uh, when he let go of it and it hit the ground, it, it was obviously boxed up, of course, but that's not the point. But when it hit the ground, it, it must have been about 12 inches above the ground, you know, the drop. And, uh, yeah, the back case has got a bit of a split in it. We might see that a bit later on, because don't forget, this is full eye, full eye definition, 1920 by 1080p. But, uh, yeah, I uh, got a bit of glue in the gap and sorted it all out and all that lot. But it, it is a bit of an old creaky one, this. Okay, but, uh, you know, you turn it on, you put a line into it or listen to the radio. You turn it up and it don't half flipping woof, let me tell you. Okay, that has got some serious flipping woof. on. You know, and there's four, four speakers flipping having a go at you as well. So, it is quite a box with quite a lot of woof inside there somewhere. And there we are, the Sharp GF777, okay, quite a legendary uh, sought-after box, actually. So there it is, I've got one. Where can we start on that one, then? Because, I mean, it's just, it's absolutely peppered with buttons. Where do we start? Well, let's start with the big old speakers at the front, then. Okay, the outer two, they're obviously, like, standard, like, left-right speakers. Okay, and then above those, you've got like those little, uh, just in there, there's that's like your tweeters, and inside there, it is actual tweeters in there, okay, not those funny, silly, flipping pizzos. Okay, I don't even know if they make a sound. You know, it's just like a little flat metal disc thing, 
with a couple of wires soldered on it. How, how on earth is a little metal disc with wires soldered on it going to make a noise? You know? The idea of a speaker is that you've got something in there which moves backwards and forwards and then it pressurises the air in front of it and it's that effect which makes it, which produces a sound. And just to prove that, look, you've got four of them right across the front of there. And when you turn them up, you can you can see them going in and out, pressurising the air in front of you and you can kind of feel it as well. So, that one's got proper tweeters on it now, not them silly little pizzos. The ones in the middle, and that is, uh, they're the ones which, you know, they up the bass a bit. Okay, and uh, on this one, uh, you do have individual little controls behind those grills. Okay, yes, the grills are detachable. We'll be doing that in a moment. Okay, the grills do detach because if I just zoom in a bit... There you go, you can see the little controls in there, in the middle. Sort of uh, one there, and one just there, sort of thing. Okay. You can see, almost see like, the little orange orange thing on the uh, on the control as well. There you go, you can see the little orange thing in there. I've set those to the top, okay. When you turn that to the left, it trims the base off. When you turn it the other way, it adds a bit in. And uh, I've never had the need to turn that uh, so it adds the bass. This thing's got more than enough flipping woof to it. You know, and I wouldn't want to turn it any more than the zero setting because I've got a feeling I'd blow them speakers right out. I wouldn't want to ruin this one. Okay, because if I did, I'd probably have the rest of the Massive after me. Okay, that being the Worldwide Ghetto Massive. And uh, yes. So there it is. What we're going to do then, is I'm going to show you that boom box with the grills off. Okay, because, well, you, you want to see those controls in there and basically what the uh, boom box looks like uh, without any grills on it. Okay, now what I do need to point out, although the grills are removable, I think they're only removable for cleaning purposes, okay. If ever you take to the streets with one of these boom boxes, you want the grills on Okay, because, you know, it only takes something to go in there and, uh, well, the first thing it gives out on those is the centre of those uh, big old woofers, okay, they get pushed in. And obviously speaking, that will ruin it. And, uh, you know, if you're at a path or something and someone playing a ball and it comes over and goes straight in the speaker and rips the cone, you're not going to be too happy. Those grills are on there for a very good reason, okay, it's to protect the speakers. So yeah, take them off, give it a dusting off in there and then put them straight back on. Okay, never, uh, you know, take to the street with the grills off. Okay, although there are a couple of music videos out there where one of those are in the video and they've got the grills off, never do it. Okay, so, we're going to get the grills off and have yourself a look at this. There it is then. Okay, that's what the uh, Sharp GF777 looks like without the grills on it. You can see that they've appeared on the top there. Uh, quite, conveniently, uh, quite conveniently held up by the antennas. Okay. I think that box is starting to show off a bit. So there we are. Let's uh, look in the speakers then. That little thing in the middle there, it's just for, the, it's just for show. It doesn't do anything. There we go. And it's just in there for show. And then there we've got the uh, right in the middle. Yeah, you can see them nice and shiny though they are. You can actually see around the room. Okay, they weren't that shiny when I received it. I had to very carefully clean those up. And there's the other one. And then there's another woofer with that thing in the middle again. Okay. I have actually uh, seen what one of these boxes once where one of those things got broken off and then what they've done, the owner done, is they got the other one, broke that one off as well, very carefully filed it down and all of the speakers are wide open, okay, instead of having that thing in the middle, one of them got broken off so he broke the other one off, carefully filed around the, uh, you know, in there and then all of the speakers are wide open. So there you go. Oh, those controls, we've got to do the controls in the middle there. Look at this. There 
a super woofer sound. Now, as you can see in there, you've got like little orange marker. Oops, sorry about that tripod. You've got the little orange marker on that. And like I say, that control, if you turn it to the left, it trims a bit off. And if you turn it to the right, it adds a bit in. But, uh, you know, trust me on this, you don't really want to add a bit in because there's more than enough bass in that box. Uh, you've got a funny little graph there as well, a little cheeseometer. Okay. Sharp weren't really that well known for doing cheeseometers. It's more a case of, you know, those uh, low end boxes are basically massive great things and there's not much inside them. And uh, just to give it a bit of graphic detail on the front, they put all loads of graphs over the front of it like that. And they put one next to the tuner, one next to the speakers, one next to the tape deck, you know, and, and uh, you know, just to, you know, give it a bit of graphic effect. And it just makes the boombox look cheesy. And that's why I sometimes refer to them as a cheeseometer. And, uh, yeah, so. Although Sharp have probably put that one on there because that's actually a proper flipping graph showing the response of the speaker. Uh, it's not quite a cheeseometer, that one. Okay, so there you go. And you normally can't see it beyond the grills anyway unless you get right up close to the boom box and you see, oh, there's a little graph in there. Okay, so at least, at least it's partly hidden and it's not right in your face because if it was, that would be a cheeseometer. Okay, so there you go. And next is the uh, GF777 with the grills off. Okay. So there we are. They do come off, but like I say, you want to uh, take them off, have a clean up around in there, and then put the grills back on. Okay, you can play it with the grills off, you know, in like in this sort of situation. If I wanted to leave the grills off, I would put the grills just down there against the wall. Okay, whip that thing right up, have them woofers going, it'll be just fine. Okay, but, you know, again, there's another danger, right? You could leave the grills off, go out the room, turn the light off, and when you come in the room, if you, you know, you come in the room and it's dark, you could walk in the room and stick your foot straight through the speaker. Okay, like I say, those grills are on there for a very good reason, okay, it's the, they, they are there to guard the speakers. Okay, they're only made out of paper, they're, you know, very light, they're obviously designed to move. Okay, so that's what speakers do, they move in and out to pressurise the air in front. And if you've taken the guards off, then they're left wide open to, you know, to accidents. And, uh, yeah, you come in the room and it's dark or whatnot, and you've got, you've got your boombox down on the floor like that, and you stick your foot through the speaker... Uh, that you, you're not going to be a happy person, and neither is that boombox for that matter, or the rest of the world will get a massive, okay? Because, uh, yes, a GF777 with a foot stuck through the speaker, it doesn't go down too well, <laughs> let me tell you. Uh, it doesn't go down too well with the world will get a massive, don't do it. So, before that does happen, and I've got a set of size, size 11s as well, and to frequently bang into things, uh, I'm going to get them speaker grills back on there. Okay then, welcome back. As you can see now, we've got the uh, Sharp GF777 with the grills back on. And uh, yes, so the speakers are nicely guarded once again. Uh, another thing that some people used to do back in the 80s, if they could afford one to uh, just totally flipping go at it with a spray can, is they used to take the speaker grills off and do some kind of fancy artwork on them with a spray can. Obviously let the paint dry and then shove them back on there. The, uh, the thing with that is, is once you've uh, done that, your eyes are drawn to the artwork that's on the grills. And uh, because of that, it sort of... Uh, the grills sort of lose their invisibility, okay? My point being it, with the grills on, you can see the speakers. If you take them off, put a bit of artwork on them, stick them back on, all of a sudden you can't see the speakers anymore. Okay, so, yeah... You know, I like it original. Okay, I'd like to see them speakers in there. And there we are. 
Now, we're going to get a bit of zoom going then, because, uh, you know, we started on the speakers with the grills and the work lot, why they're on there. And the fact that they are easily removable for a bit of dust in, to get all the dust out of the woofers, and then you put them back on. And now we're going to be looking at the tape decks. We've got two of them, it's a double cassette unit. Flipping, yes, so we can copy cassettes. That one then, let's see, uh, tape one. Uh, how can I put this? Well, this is one of these cassette decks where the uh, eject button and the stop are separate. Okay, so from the left over to the right, we've got eject, play, stop, rewind, and a funny little cut button. I'll just explain that later. Fast forward, pause, and then in the middle of that, we've got record mute. Now, that button is normally associated with deck two, so we we'll save that for deck two. Now then, that cut button, what that does, if we go over there, what it does is you can fast forward a cassette while the, while the music is playing. The boombox is not plugged in, but I'm going to press the play button anyway. Okay, so I'll push the play button, let's get the camera out of its own shadow, like that. Okay, what you can do is you can press fast forward like that and it stays in, you see. Now, at this point, if the tape deck was going, it would search for the next track. Okay. And, uh, yeah, it would search for the next track. But if you wanted to cancel that function, what you do is you press the cut button, which is right next to it, and it releases that like that. Now, on some other boom boxes, you don't have the cut button. Okay, so if you did do that and you wanted to cancel that operation, you then have to press stop and then press play again. Okay, but with this one, you've actually got the cut function. So when you're playing, and you know you choose that. It's the same with the rewind as well. If you wanted to cancel that function, you just press a cut button. It just releases it. That's all it is. It's just a release button. Okay. Uh, searching for tracks then, well, with this one, let me just get that out, with this one, on some other boom boxes, you can press, look what I've just done there, that quick demonstration, where you press play, and if you want the next track, you then press fast forward, when it finds the next track, what happens is, is the uh, fast forward button pops out like that, and then it carries on with the next track, supposing you wanted to search for the song which is three tracks away where this boombox can do it okay with the basic one it's what's called APSS okay this one has got something called APLD okay and you can see it in the cassette deck there it says uh, is that deck one it says on there no it says play because this is the playback deck it says play and in one because it's deck one and on there it says APLD Okay, now that function is only for uh, deck one. Okay, it's not for both of them. What you do when you're playing the tape, so you have to tape playing. If we just, uh, you know, you wanted to, supposing you've just put the tape in and it's playing on track one, supposing you wanted the uh, the track three, three way, uh, three songs down the track, down the tape. What you do, come all the way along, now you've got some buttons there, see it says APL, oh, APLD on them, right there, okay, it's the right hand one, you press that, okay, there's a little arrow on that, I don't know if you can see that, you should be able to because it's full high definition, where's my remote, I've got a remote with this camera. There you go, there's a little arrow on it. Okay, there's that one and then there's that one. What you do is you push that one three times. And then what happens is when you push that three times, you see those little row of LEDs just coming in there. These. Okay, go one, two, three. And it'll go one, two, three. Okay, not all, all three of them don't light up. When you push that one once, number one lights up. When you push it again, that one goes out and number two lights up. When you push it again, Number two goes out and number three lights up. 
Okay, so what you've set the APLD uh, function, one, two, three, so it moves along to number three. Go back to your tape deck, like that. And you see that fast forward button, you press it, like that. The tape would start winding really fast, and then back along here, this number three, it would count down. Okay, number three would go out, and number two would light up. Then number two would go out, and then number one would light up. And then when number one goes out, what happens is, back at the tape deck here, that pops out, and then it starts playing. Okay, that's what the APLD does. Now, you've got, notice I've got two buttons on that, there. Okay, that's handy because once you've set that APLD, uh, you can't really clear it. There's not a clear function on it. Okay, when you're playing a tape, they, those don't normally light up. It's only when you start playing around with these buttons, it then lights up. Okay, so if you're playing a, a, a tape and you want it it's such a track and you accidentally press that uh, one too many, what you can do is press this one and bring the lights back along. Okay, this one makes the lights go that way and this one makes the lights go back the other way. Okay, so if you, you know, if you wanted track four, okay, so one, two, three, four, but you accidentally selected five, you can actually press this one and bring it back one. Okay. Another thing that you can do as well, with, with that cut button again, if if while that's counting down you decide, oh, I don't want that anymore, what you can do is go back to the uh, tape deck and press the cut button. As soon as you press that and that pops out, those lights on there, all of them go out because that that's how you clear it. Okay, so that's deck one then in the APL, what the APLD does. It allows you to search, not for the next track along, but, you know, certain amount up to, there you go, you've got seven on there. So you can actually search down the tape up to seven tracks away. Okay, not many boomboxes offer that. I mean, a lot of them do the, uh, the function where you can search for the next track, yes. But like I say, this boombox, when it was for sale, brand new, it was probably very expensive. And it's got all various different... Uh, advanced toys and whistles on it like that. Okay. Next tape deck then. This is the recording tape deck, this one. Zooming a bit on the buttons then. Right. What we got then. There's that record mute. Okay. When you're recording, you press that. What happens is, it's, it pops back out. But when you hold it in, it actually records a blank spot on the tape. Okay, that's what that's for. So when you you uh, copy in a song over, when that song ends, if you press that in, and then press stop, it uh it allows you to record a blank bit at the end of the track. Okay, that's what record mute is. You've got a pause button there. Okay, so when the tape's playing, you press that. Oh, that I meant pause. There you go. I accidentally pressed the record mute. So there you go, the latch is in, and then when you press it again, it pops back out and playback resumes. Moving along then, from left to right, got record, because this is a record deck. Play, stop, rewind, there's that cut button again. Fast forward and uh, eject. Okay, now on this one, uh, yeah, you can see it, if I just zoom right in on it. With this one, it works a bit differently. That cut button works a bit differently. Oh, I almost had it then. Come on. This is supposed to be full eye definition. Right, there we go. Let me get all that stuff off the screen and I can see it with you. Yeah, that's much better. So, we've got our rewind and fast forward then. But you can see this linking line between the play button and... You know, the play button and the rewind, the cut and the fast forward. Now what, how this one works, is you've got your play button going there, like that. When you're searching for the next track, what happens is, you just press the fast forward button, and what happens at that point, is uh, the tape deck, it drops the heads off the tape, only very slightly, 
and then it speeds up. And what happens is, uh, it sort of comes out of the speakers at half the volume, but you can hear the music, but just the stupid speed. Okay, it sounds all squawky and squeaky. Okay, and then obviously speaking at the end of the song as it fades out, you can hear that getting less and less, and you press the cut. Okay, and then that allows you to find uh, where the next track is. Okay, it's not as advanced as the APLD, but then you don't get the APLD on uh, the recording and playback deck too. Okay, so you've got you've got that option instead. When you press that, it drops the head off the cassette ever so slightly, winds it on at a really fast speed, and you can hear it all coming out all squeaky on the on the audio. And then you know, like I say. As the track comes to an end and it fades out, that gets quieter and quieter really quick. And you think, oh, there's the next next track, press that, cut. And at that point, the tape, uh, tape deck then puts the head back into the cassette as it should be, and the play resumes. Similarly, if you're playing a track and you want to find the beginning of it, press your play button in, press rewind, and it will do that thing, but backwards, where it drops the head off the cassette, winds it backwards at a silly speed and you can hear it coming out on the speakers and of course at the beginning of the song uh, it goes quiet again so you press the cut button like that and you've got to do it a bit half sharpish and uh, press the cut button and then the tape head is then put back into the cassette it then goes back in the correct direction because the usual winding don't forget and then the track starts again Okay, very handy if you've just finished listening to a track and you want to listen to it again. Just press rewind and you can cue it right the way back to the beginning. Okay, and then once you've, you've heard, heard the you know, the beginning, you press cut. On other boom boxes, what you've got to do is if you want to listen to it again, you've got to stop, rewind, think, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I think that'll do it. Press play, no, bit more, press rewind. Is that it? Stop play. No, bit more. Wind. That'll do it. Play. Oh, went back too far. Fast forward. Stop play. There it is. Okay, that's what you've got to do on other tape decks. Not with this one because it's a sharp GF triple seven. Don't forget. So you've got your Q and review on this one, and on the other one you've got your uh, APLD. Let's get rid of that. Moving along then, if I can get this zoom out, look at all these flipping buttons. Now where do I start on this? Remember what I was saying, where I allocate 30 minutes to a boombox video. We're just not going to do it. Okay, we've got two levels of controls on this one. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the top level first. Okay, because there are so many controls on it, it is ridiculous. But then, like I say, this is a triple seven and... It's got all the bells and whistles and various different functions on it. You can slice it and dice it and change it whichever way takes your fancy. And uh, yeah, for some people, the more the more controls and bells and whistles it's got, the better it is. And that's the kind of way I like it. Okay, so we're going to do this top row controls first, and then we'll do all these other ones down here. Okay, start with these then. We've already done these. That's the APLD, and it's associated with these little red lights in there okay we've already done those next one along then that is your function selector okay right down the bottom we've got tape in the middle we've got radio and then up the top fantastic yes we've got a line in function okay you flick that right the way up you can actually connect like say a cd player into this or reel to reel cassette deck mini disc machine or whatever turn that up and whatever's playing on the uh, mini disc machine, uh, uh, mini disc machine, reel to reel tape, tape deck, uh, whatever, it comes out on the speakers. You turn the volume control up, and uh, the audio comes out on the speakers, which is most fantastic. Okay, now up the top there on that one, if I can get a zoom in on it, at one side of it, it says line in, and at the other side of it, it says phono. Now we should go be going into that a bit later as to why it says that. There you go, it says line in on it on this side and on that side it says phono. We should go into that a bit later. Moving along then, oh look at this, we've got a recording level. 
Okay. Now, it's not just one control there. As you can see on here, there, you've got left, and it shows it a little black dot in the middle, and then you've got right with this outer one. Now, if I turn this, you've got a little dot on the front there, and then you've got that little bit that sticks up. Okay. Now, when I turn that, both of them turn, which is fantastic. Okay. But what you can do, if you really need to, supposing the incoming source, supposing you're recording off a reel-to-reel -reel cassette deck, and for whatever reason it may be, one of the channels uh, is a bit quieter than the other. What you can do is you can get hold of that one, and then see that little notch, you can turn that and differentiate it like that. So you've got that one there, and then that one there. Okay, or you can turn it the other way if you want. It's a bit difficult to do it with. There you go. See, I'm holding that one and I'm turning that one. You see? Like that. There's one and there's the other. Hold it there. Turn it. There you go. There's one and there's the other one there. So you've got left and right individual control on your manual recording level. And of course, to cancel that with just one hand, you just turn that like that bring that all the way down like that and there you go they're both level again now there you go so there it is then on other boom boxes you've only got one of those okay and when you turn it it's left and right at the same time you can't separate the left and right channels so you know if the incoming source is a bit off balance then unfortunately it's going to get recorded on the cassette in the boom box like it as well okay you can't uh, you know uh, alter one channel from the other because there's only one control speaking of which if you move along here a bit we got record mode now this boom box does give you the option of having manual or automatic okay it's on uh, manual at the moment but if you press it down that's on auto Okay, I don't like auto myself. On some cheaper boom boxes, probably not this one. I've never used uh, auto on this, but on some cheaper boom boxes, the automatic level control on it is so rubbish that uh, if you've got like a particularly loud bit of music and it's got like quieter bits in in it somewhere along the line, you will actually find out that uh, the only way I can word it is basically as the song fades down to the quieter bits some of the quieter bits can actually sound louder than the loud bits okay and uh yeah it, it basically the internal electronics takes a guesswork at what the level should be and of course what happens is is uh on the loud bits it sort of adjusts the volume down a bit too much and then on the quiet bits it turns it up a bit too much and the result is the quiet bits can sometimes sound louder than the loud bits it's really cranky and for that very reason I generally don't like uh, automatic uh, automatic controls okay now on some boom boxes you can trust it okay and this is probably one of them I've never used the manual on the uh, the automatic on this one so I'll keep it turned up on manual and we've got a manual controls there Moving along then, we've got dubbing. What that is for, when you turn it on, it allows you to do a uh, copy from one cassette to the other. Okay, when you turn it off, uh, what that is, when that's off, uh, this boombox has got built-in microphones. Okay, when it's off and you press record, it actually uh, records whatever's coming in on the microphones. Okay, but when it's up like that, it's uh, it's for copying. Okay, now then, tape type selector. On this boombox, you've actually got two of them. Okay, and on some other boomboxes, there'll be one of them. Whatever you select it on, that will be for both of the tape decks. Not on this. You've got two of them. Okay, one. Well, this is deck one, and this is deck two. Okay, deck two is the record one. 
On this one, we've got two functions. Down the bottom, we've got normal, and then the, when you press that up, it's for chrome and metal cassettes. Okay, but but on deck two, you've got three functions. Down the bottom, you've got normal. Yeah, in the middle, you've got chrome, and then if you've got a metal cassette in deck two, flick it all the way up there. Okay, so there you go. And I think that's for recording as well. Again, on some boom boxes, you've got a tape type selector, but it's for playback only. So there you go. I'll just leave them in the middle because you know I look all the switches in a nice row so that when it's the boom box is on display, they look all nice and level. Okay, then you've got a bit of a gap. Okay, I've discussed the tape types now, what that does. You've got a bit of a gap between that and the next lot. Moving along, SNRS. Okay, what could that be? Well, if you've ever heard of Dolby noise reduction, what that is, is basically it's Sharp's equivalent of that. And SNRS basically means Sharp Noise Reduction System. That's all it is. And, of course, if you flick that on, which it currently is, uh, it does noise reduction on the cassette. And, of course, if you don't really want it, you can turn it off. But, like I say, I'll look all my switches to be in a nice row, so I'll leave it in, in that position when the boombox is on display. The next one, then, meter and light. This is interesting. With this one, it's sprung-loaded, okay? Currently, it's in the up position. You can't have it stuck in the lower position. I'll press it. I'll let go of it. It pops back up. Okay. Now, the idea of that is, when it's in the up position, it's for the VUs. Okay. Just a quick look at the VUs, then. There they are. Okay. We've got VU left and VU right. And you see the needles in there. So when you're playing back the music, they dance backwards and forwards. It's nice to watch it, actually, but be warned. Okay. They're quite hypnotic and... Uh, yeah, you know, you start looking at them, the next minute, three or four hours have gone by. You think, for goodness sake, where did those three or four hours go? They're quite hypnotic, be warned. Okay, ha, ha, ha. That meter light then, what that does, when it's in the upwards position, it's for the VUs. When you press that down, what happens is, if I just zoom out, okay, this little uh, scale all the way, all the way along here, it lights up. Okay, when you press that down, like that, and another thing it does, well, two things, when you hold that down, uh, these VUs, they take on a different role. Okay, let me just adjust that camera up a bit. What happens is, let me just adjust them, you've got VU right and VU left, okay. Note on this one, you've got like this little thing up the top here. You've got E and F. Okay, that's your battery level indicator. When you press that little spring-loaded toggle down, this uh, needle in it, it will move along that scale to show you how much battery power you've got left. Okay, and if you're trying to tune into a radio station, okay, hold that button down. Where is it? There. Okay, hold that down. And then while you're tuning in, if I can find it, see these numbers up the top here. They give you a guide as to how strong the signal strength is. Okay, so if you're tuning in for a radio station, hold that down. And as you're tuning in, you'll notice this needle go up and down sort of thing. And then when you, once you lock into a station which has got a strong signal, that just goes straight up. Okay, and then obviously speaking, as you carry on going down the scale, it'll start dancing all over the place. And then a, a, a station will come in, and it'll be sort of there, sort of thing, and you, you'll see it move every so often. And uh, you think, oh, well, that's not a very strong station. So you carry along, and then you hit another station which is strong, and it'll just go whack straight up the top. And then you let go of that little control down there. And it goes back to being a VU, so as the music's playing, it'll dance sort of thing to the beat of the music sort of thing, you know, and uh, that's what the uh, that little switch does. But like I say, it's sprung-loaded, and you can't keep it in the lower position, okay? It'll always pop back up, okay? So that one's sprung-loaded. The next one along, then, we've got... 
three functions on this. We have got down the bottom there mono. Now what that is for is if you're listening to uh, an FM station and it, it's a bit weak. Okay, there's lots of hissing and popping and crackling and goodness knows what else. If you put it on mono, it tends to cut a lot of that out. But when you do put it on mono, as note it suggests, uh, the sound comes out in the speakers in mono. Okay, if everything's okay though, you put it on the stereo one. Yeah. That next one up, when you're tuning in, if you want to cut out all the weak stations, you put it on net. Okay, and then you only get certain stations come in that are beyond a certain strength. Okay, and as you can see, it says stereo mute. Okay, I generally don't use that one. I like when I'm tuning in for all of the stations to be pulled in, whether they're strong, weak, or somewhere in between. Moving along then, speaking of tuning in radio and all that lot, we're going to need a band selector so we can select whatever one we want to, uh, you know, use. Four band radio then, we've got FM. Is that shortwave? Yeah, shortwave. I've got all the marks on the screen so I can't really see it. Let me take that off so I can see it with you. Yep, yeah, shortwave then. Medium wave, which is the same as AM. And then long wave. Okay, now, if you're on shortwave, like that, you see that other little control next to it, just there, that is a fine tuning, okay, and whenever you're listening to shortwave, you turn the tuning, and you might not find a station, but if you turn that, you'll hear it, you'll hear a certain station come in and get louder, and you keep on turning it, and then fade out again, so you turn it back a bit, I think there's a station there, and then you carry on going along the scale, but no more stations. So you start coming back, just turn that a little bit like that, and then carry on going back along the scale. You'll find other stations. Okay, short wavers are a bit bit odd like that. Okay, so there you go. So look, say for example, if I leave that where it currently is, and then go right up and down the scale uh, on short wave, I might say find say six stations. If I just get hold of that and turn it like that and then go back down the scale, I might only find two and then turn it a bit more, go back along the scale, you might find eight stations. It's really weird, it's a short wave. I've, I've listened to it a few times and, you know, just for fun, just to see what I could pull in on this boombox. And yeah, it's, you, you've got to sort of play around with that a bit in order to, uh, you know, line it up with the stations that are out there. All of that's fine and dandy, but you're going to need one of those. Okay. That on this one, it is weighted. Okay, on the GF777. You can get hold of that and you can whiz that around. And you can get this little uh, indicator in there to whiz along. There it is. Okay. So you can see how you can whiz up and down that scale with a weighted tuner. Okay, there are other boom boxes out there which haven't got a weighted tuner, and as soon as you let go of that, it just stops. Okay, this one's got uh, has got what's called a weighted tuner. Okay, so let me zoom out then. Right, we've discussed then all of these controls along here. Okay, we've got that next row to do down there. Where are we doing for time? Well, I think I'm going to need a cup of tea time because my throat's starting to dry out a bit. When we come back, we're going to do this bottom row of controls here. And, uh, yeah, we'll crack into it. Uh, yeah, this is definitely, uh, you know, more than a half an hour job, isn't it? Okay, so come back in a minute and uh, we shall carry on. Okay, just bear with me a minute. Okay then, thanks for coming back. We're going to carry on now with Sharp GF777. 
Okay, for me that break was long enough where I could have a bit more than a cup of tea time. I had something to eat as well. So let's uh, zoom out then and carry on with the discussion of all the toys, bells and whistles and functions on this here boombox, which is the Sharp GF777. Okay, uh, this is definitely one of these ones where, you know, no matter which way you, you try it, you're not going to get it in within 30 minutes. Okay, you know, if I, if I describe everything in detail, no way, not in 30 minutes. We're going to be discussing them. This next row of buttons and toys and things. All the way along there. Let's zoom in and get into it. There it is. Tape operation. What could that be? Now, on some boom boxes, you get this function where you can put two tapes in, okay? You start one playing, and then you press play on the other deck, and what happens is when one of the decks finishes and stops, the other deck then starts playing automatically, okay? In the current position that is set, that is what that allows you to do. However, You'll probably notice on this one, it, it does a bit more than that, because if you look there, it says 1 and 2, and you've got it going from 1 to 2, and then 2 to 1. As far as I know, that's the only boom box that can do that. Okay, a lot of boom boxes, they do offer that option where you can uh, play tape 1, and when tape 1 ends... Tape 2 can start, okay, but it doesn't do it back the other way from 2 to 1, okay. On this one, the Sharp DF777, you can do that, okay. Now then, what happens if I press that over the other way? Like that. What does that do? Well, let me tell you. I'm not, oh dear, it's gone a bit out of focus. They've got a bit too, uh, a bit too close. Right, let's do that. And lower the, uh, lower the camera. It's the only way we're going to get near, nearer to it then. So what does that do then? As you can see on there, we've got the 1 and the 2 again. But in the between it says, or and. Okay. So basically that's 1 or 2. And the other way of wording it is 1 and 2. Now you're probably thinking, why would you want to play two tape decks at the same time? <laughs> well, we'll get into that, we'll come back to that, because there's another uh, little uh, button somewhere along there associated with that. So we, we'll leave that as it is, and when we come to that function, we should come back to that, and then it'll all come clear as to why you can play both tape decks at the same time. Moving along then, mixing, okay, right down the bottom, everything's off, okay, I just need to get all that stuff off the screen because I've got lines all over the screen and I can't explain it for you, right, when it's down the bottom then everything's off, yeah? when you put it in the middle, like that, microphone mixing is on, but I've done. I've never figured out from that from when I first got this to the present day. I've never figured out what radio echo is. No idea. Uh, I've tried uh, tuning in the radio and flicking it on and seeing what radio echo does. And uh, well, I can't figure out what it is. So if something's broken in there, I don't know. Okay. If you know what that is, get on the comments box. Okay. There's obviously other members of the Worldwide Ghetto Massive out there that got a triple seven. It's not just me in in the uh, in the Massive that owns a triple seven. Oh no, there's a few of us. And if you know what that radio echo does, get on the comments box and please let me know because I'd like to know if how to work it, what it does, when it does it, why it does it, and if my one's broken. Okay. So in the middle then. Uh, microphone mixing is on, but radio echo is off. 
Okay. When you put it up the top, both of them are on. Okay. You've got radio echo on and microphone. Okay, so whether or not, uh, how can I put it? You can like sing over the radio and there's like an echo function. I don't know. Speaking of echo, if I move this along a bit, I need to get my thing back on the screen so I can set it right in the middle of the screen. Right about there. Now, that flipping dual record level is a bit in the way, but you can just about make it out. It says echo down there. Okay. As like I say, if you're singing along, you've got your microphone plugged in and whatnot, you can choose the amount of echo. Okay, if you set that down there, it just sounds fat, like I'm sounding right now on the on the camera. Okay, there's obviously no echo on this, unless it's my voice bouncing around the room. Okay, but on this unit, you can turn that up, and it makes your voice sound all echoey, I suppose. I've never tried it, but I'm pretty sure it'd explain it in the instruction manual if I had one. But, there it is. Now, I normally keep it up the top there, because... Me being me, I like to keep all my uh, dials facing upwards or all to the left or the right or whatnot. So it just keeps it in the middle like that. And there's a reason why I keep it up like that, and that is because of the next uh, control coming along. There we go. Microphone fader. Okay. What you do with that is when the music is playing. If you turn that all the way down there, you've got all of the music playing. Okay. If you turn all the way around there, you've got the microphone on. Okay. But hold on a moment. I think Toby's going to wreck another video. Come on. Just excuse me a minute. What do you want? What do you want, Toby? Come on. I'm trying to do a video, aren't I? Do you just want to be... Do you just want to sit there because you don't like being on your own? Go on then, park the pause then. Go on then. Well, I've got a feeling he just doesn't want to be on his own. Okay, so... Microphone faded in. You turn that all the way up to microphone and you can uh, talk over the music sort of thing. Okay. And yeah, you can talk all over the music. And I've got a feeling what that basically does, when it's all the way up there, there's no music. Okay. So if you turn it there, again, it's something I've never tried. It's one of these funny little bells and whistles where, I, you know, I haven't got any use for it. You know, I'm not some rapper MC, but what that is for, a lot of my theory is anyway, when it's there, it's all you know, it's just the music. When it's all the way around there, it's just the microphone. But when you put it there, it's a bit of both. Okay, so you can talk all over the music. Okay, so really speaking, from there to there, you can fade your voice in. And then from there to there, you can fade your music out and just have all your voice. Okay. That's what I think that's for. So, there you've got a bit of both. Okay. Toby, that's my... Oh, he's got his head in my cup. One of these days I'm going to have to get you on video doing that just for the laughs. So, that's what that's for then. Okay, sorry about the Toby, but he, you know, he just likes to come and wreck a video. Okay. I'm pretty sure... Uh, if you search through my videos, you'll find videos called Feline. Okay, or just put that in the search box on my channel and you'll find Feline videos with the Tobias. Next one along then. Now this, okay, this goes back to that function I was saying about where, uh, about playing two tape decks at the same time. Sounds a bit odd on the surface of it, but when you see that control, the tape fader, it all comes clear. Just like the uh, microphone mixing, really. You turn it all the way down there, you've got deck one only. Okay. 
turn it all the way around there, you've got deck two only. Yep. But you put it in the middle, you've got both. Okay. Now, if you've got deck one playing like that, and that song is just about to end, okay, you, what you can do is you, sort, you can sort of uh, fade one out and fade one in at the same time. Okay, so you start deck two going, and as you go like that, deck one would fade out, and deck two would fade in. And you can do it back the other way if you really, really, really had to. Okay, and that is why, uh, if we go back to this, that function, that is why you can press that over that way, and have it run two tape decks at the same time. When it's over there and you attempt to do that, it won't uh, run both tape decks at the same time, but what it'll do instead is to play one of the decks. When that ends, it'll then start on the other deck. Okay, but when you put it over the other way, uh, it lets you do that thing where you can fade out one tape deck at the same time as fading the other one in. Okay, I always leave it like that because, again, I've never done that thing where I've had that overwhelming urge to fade one tape out and fade another in. Okay, I'm sure some people would find that a useful little feature, but again, it's one of these little toys I've never had the overwhelming urge to play with it or use it or anything like that. And that one is that there. So I'll keep it in the middle. Okay. Moving along then. Right, we've got base control. Now I've no idea why that is right the way up like that. The only thing or reason why I can think that's all the way up like that, because any level of volume, that would be ridiculous. Oh, that's a base control. The only reason why I can think that's turned up all the way up like that is because I had the music turned down really really low but I wanted it to absolutely boom okay I do like when you tunes like that sometimes certain tunes you put the mu put the volume on low and then turn the bass right up it's nice and quiet but it fills the room up with deep resonant bass and it but trust me this boombox is more than capable of doing that Toby will you get your head out of my cup please come on you've had you've had it twice today you're gonna Flip in, do your teeth in. Sorry about that. I have to get him out of there before he hit the bottom. So, bass control then. Uh, as it is all the way round there, that adds bass in. If you put it in the middle, there's nothing at all. Okay, it's like as it is on the recording. Okay, it doesn't add anything in, it doesn't take anything out, but... You turn it the other way, it starts cutting some out. And if you turn it all the way down there, then it's the music sounds really sort of flat. Okay, or if the recording is a bit overly excitable, you can turn it right the way down like that and trim it out. Okay, ideally you want it round about there. Same with a treble, really. Again, I was probably listening to some tune and I had that right the way up as well with the volume on the low level. Okay, what I will say with that bass control, if you do turn that right the way up like that, uh, you won't get the volume up that far before the speakers start distorting, okay, trust me. That uh, amount of bass increase, it's only suited for uh, songs that have been recorded that you know that you can trust, that have been recorded very lightly in bass and you just want to whip it up a bit. Okay, you don't want that like that and have a reasonable amount of volume and then just put in a tape that you've never played before, turn it on and have your speakers blow out. Okay, it can be done. So, play carefully with that. Okay, and there we are. So, we've done the bass and the treble then, what's up next? Well, you're going to need one of those just in case uh, you're playing a recording and it's not quite centred. Okay. So if it's a, uh, how can I word it? Well, if it's a bit, uh, let's say the left channel is a bit uh, not as powerful as the right hand one. What you can do is you can fade the right hand one out a bit. Okay, or actually, actually it's that way, isn't it? Okay, you can fade out the right hand one a bit and give the bit more priority to the left, and that will level it out. And similarly, if it was the other way. 
like that. But when the uh, recording is nice and level on both sides, you set it into the middle like that. Okay, that's what that one does. This one, I think it's pretty obvious. That one uh, allows you to set the, uh, the boom box so that, uh, you know, it lets you decide how hard the speakers are going to woof. Okay, I've had that up to there before now, and I'll tell you what, it is flipping ridiculous. I've had to turn up there with some tune, certain tunes playing, right, oh, I've had to have that bass control right the way down there to stop the speakers blowing out. Like I say, you start turning that flipping woof control up, that bass control, you've got to really trim it right the way down to stop the speakers from going pop. Okay, and in certain cases, I've even had to uh, go over to these controls behind those grills, okay, and turn them down a bit as well because it just would have blown those out. Okay, so there we go. So I've had, it, had that control up that loud before, and I'll tell you what, it's silly. You don't want to stand in front of that because it'll, it'll uh, boom your ears right in. Okay, so there you go. This, this box has got some serious flipping sound on it as well. So there we go. Let's turn that down. It's never fun to leave that turned up like that and turn the boom box on because if it's left tuned into a radio station, the minute you turn it on, uh, you know, you get instantly deafened. So always make sure that control set right to the lowest level before you turn the unit on. That's all I can say. Otherwise, you're going to be in for a bit of a, bit of a surprise and... It could damage your boombox if the other settings are up a bit too much as well. Next one, speaking of uh, volume level, we got loudness. Now what I've noticed with other boomboxes before that have that function, is when you turn it off, uh, it sort of, it flattens everything. Okay, and it also turns the volume, it, it affects the volume. Okay, the, the, with it, with the loudness turned off, it just sort of seems uh, as if the music's lacking dimension, sort of thing. It's the music's there; it's in stereo, but it just sort of sounds a bit dull and a bit flat, sort of thing, and a bit uh, lacking dimension. Okay, but when you turn it on, it all sort of comes alive. Okay, and. That's the thing I've noticed with boomboxes that have got a loudness switch. You turn it off and the music just sounds flat and dull, lacking dimension, and all that business. The minute you turn it on, it just comes alive, uh, fills the room up, you know, you've got your highs, you've got your lows, and your mid-range and all that lot. But when you turn it off, it just sounds flat. So I'll just leave it turned on all the time. Sharp GF777 then. Okay. That's the one we've been looking at, but we've got one more control to do yet. There it is. Power. And yes, this box has got plenty of it. Down the bottom then we've got sleep. It says sleep on that. There it is. Okay, it says sleep on it. And then up the top we've got on. Now what the sleep function does, like that, you can leave that in that position. But if you put a tape in and press play... The whole boombox powers up. Okay. And then if it's in that position, when the tape reaches the end and turns off, the whole boombox will then power down and turn off. Okay. So that's what that does. You can't see it from this angle, but this... See this difference between these two colours? Just inside there, there's a little red LED in there. Okay. And when you turn it on, there's a little red LED that pops up in there, lights up. Okay. This here, that's that built-in microphone, and there's another one right up the other end by the tape deck. And I'll bring this along. There it is. There's the other uh, built-in microphone right there. Now, speaking of microphones and all that lot, we're still not done on the front of this. I'll bring this all the way down here. creaky tripod, come on, there we go, look what we got down there, what we have there then, if I can uh, sort this zoom out a bit, it would be better actually if I took the camera off the tripod, 
bear with me a minute. This won't take a, a couple of moments. Well, here we go, camera's off the tripod then. Let's lower it down there. What have we got then? Yeah, they are. So you sort that bed sheet out. Right. We have three sockets there. They're 6.1 millimetre in size. Well, there we are. Tape one monitor for that left hand one. Okay, now that's a headphone socket, funnily enough. And what you can do with that is while uh, you've got music coming out on the speakers, if you plug your headphones in there and uh, put your headphones on, although you can't adjust the volume level, you can play tape one while tape two's playing and have the uh, sound of it coming out, out of there. Okay, so you can uh, basically plug your headphones in there, cue up a song. Okay, and that's what that is for. It's a headphone socket, but it's not uh, an adjustable volume one. Moving along then, you've got yeah, there's a microphone mix there. Okay, so you can plug a microphone in there and, you know, like I say, rap all over the music if you really, really have to. And then we've got a bit of a gap there. I'll explain why there's a gap there in a minute. And then we've got headphones. 6.1 millimeter, so you can plug in a proper set of high for headphones. And if you want to uh, use the headphones that come with your little pod thing, you need to put a reducer in there to reduce it down to 3.5mm. Going back to that gap then, why is there a gap there? Well, I'll tell you why there is a gap there. On other models of Boombox, and I've got a feeling it's the, the higher-end Japanese equivalent of this, I've got a feeling it's the GF999, which I may had, uh, need to add a bit half urgently, if you're thinking about getting one, it runs on 100 volts only. Okay, so keep that in mind. But I think it's on the GF999. Right about there, where that gap is, you've got another microphone socket. Okay, so you can plug two microphones in. Okay, so if you look at that part down the bottom there, on the GF999, it does actually have four jack sockets on it. But on this one, it's only got the three. Okay, so there we go. Sharp GF777, then we're still not done. We've yet to look around the back. And, uh, yes, so, just to recap in this section then, we've done all those controls along there. What they do, how they do it, when they do it, why they do it, and, you know, the complexity of them. And some, you know, there's certain things on there which... You know, a lot of people just won't use, but Sharp had this uh, thing about, oh, we'll put all those features and functions on there. I'm just trying to get the camera back on the tripod. Yeah, we'll put all those features and functions on there, just to, uh, well, give it a load of bells and whistles. Okay, so we're still not done. We're going to uh, pop off for a break right about now, because I'll, oh, yeah, I need a cup of tea time to stop off throat from drying out. When we come back we're going to spin that boom box around and have a look at the uh, the input and output connections on it and all of that lot and the specifications and all that and I'm going to dig out a tape measure and we can measure that thing up so you can see how big it really is. Okay, it's alright looking at your computer screen and thinking oh yeah that looks quite a sizable boom box but it's best uh, to express that in inches and millimetres. If you just bear with me a minute, I'm going to go get a cup of tea time. You can do the same if you want, or a glass of cool drink or whatever. And we'll come back after this. Okay then, thanks for coming back after the break. I've got my cup of tea and we're ready to go then. So what we got there then is the specification plate on the boombox that we've just been looking at. 
And before you mention it, yes, I have got hold of the camera because the camera tripod was sort of uh, at that angle and you couldn't really see the top of the label. So I've taken the camera off the tripod, lowered it down like that, and now we can see all of it. Okay, for your viewing delight. What we got there then is a Sharp model number GF777E. Okay, now there is a Z version of this, a GF777Z. But the difference with that one is uh, the radio on it. Okay, this one has got FM, short wave, medium wave, and long wave. Okay, where medium wave is also the same as AM. On the 777Z version, okay, you'll have FM, uh, FM medium wave, short wave one, and short wave two. Okay, you don't get a long wave on the triple seven Z okay so that is the difference between the triple seven E and the triple seven Z okay you don't get a long wave on the triple seven Z okay but you instead you get two short wave bands okay so that's ideal if you're really into short wave and you've got no use for long wave but if you want long wave then uh, you need the triple seven E which is what I've got there Okay, so this can be powered then, we'll get all that stuff off the screen. It can be powered on 110, 220 or 240 volts, 50 or 60 hertz will do. And it's got a power consumption of 60 watts. Alternatives include a 15 volt DC uh, adapter thing, or 10 times D cells. And then just below that we've got uh, the frequency range of the bands on the radio. A serial number, and then under that it says Sharp Corporation made in Japan. Okay. And that is situated in about that position on the back of the boombox. Right there. Coming up here. There we go. What that is for is an external FM antenna. Okay. Now... I'm pretty sure what you do with that is you put a plug, a two-pin plug in that, and you use the center, uh, the center hole, and the one to the right for FM. Okay, if that will zoom back in, there we go. So you use the center hole and the one to the right for FM. The one to the left, I don't know what that is, but it says UKW on it. Okay, there are other boom boxes out there. We've just got, I think it's either two or three posts and they've got like uh, screws in and you just wrap the wire around this one you've actually got jack sockets on it okay so i've done what ukw is okay but on the, you know fm that's pretty obvious moving along then there's that specification plate again oh yes a selection of jacks to have a look at starting from uh, the left then we got a set of RCA Phono line out connections. Okay. Not that many boom boxes offer a line out. This one does. And what you can basically do is if you've got a tape playing in this unit, you can uh, basically have that signal coming out of those sockets going to some other bit of equipment. Okay, maybe an amplifier or uh, another bit of equipment which should do a recording. Okay. So you can output, you know, in signal form, out of those outlets. Moving along then, we've got a little switch. Now we'll come back to that switch in a minute. Moving along then, we've got another set of RCA phonos. And they are for the line in. Okay, so you can connect a reel-to-reel -reel machine on there, a CD player, mini disc machine, or whatever. And input it into that machine. Now those, they do have two-in-one function, and that is where we go back to that switch. That switch then, it's got two options to it. Okay, when you flick it over to the left, it's a line in. Okay, so you can connect in there, look a mini disc player, CD player, another reel-to-reel -reel machine, uh, some other source, maybe an 8-track player or something like that. Okay, because those are at what's called line level. Okay, but if you're going to connect a turntable in, and that turntable does not have a, uh, a phono stage in it, 
it basically means that the signal coming out of there is a much lower signal than what you'd get from a tape deck or a mini disc machine or whatnot. In which case, that little switch there, okay, you'd flick it over the phono, and then when you put the signal into the line in line in jacks there. Uh, there's a, a phono stage inside the boom box and it will actually take the signal from the turntable, bring it up a bit to line level, then amplify it, and then it comes out on the speakers. Okay, so you've got an option with this one. You can either have, it, either have the input as line in or phono. I have never used a phono on that or turntable, so I'll keep it fixed over to line in all the time. Okay. That other little post moving along next to the RCA phono inputs, it says GND. That's a ground connection. Okay, now apparently if you've got a turntable connected in there, what you can do, if your turntable has a GND connection on it or ground, and you're finding that when you're playing records there's a lot of pops and clicks and goodness knows what else, apparently all those pops and clicks are, well, a lot of them associated with static. What you can do basically is connect a wire from the ground connection on the turntable to the ground connection on that boom box and it's either supposed to reduce or cancel out a lot of the pops and clicks that are associated with static. Okay, so that's what that is for if you've ever wondered what that is. Moving along a bit, we've got some other jacks right about there. It says ext mic. Okay. Yes, we've got external microphones on this. Okay, so you can plug them in there. And if you remember, on the front, we did have a microphone socket, but it was only one of them. Okay. And, uh, yes, yeah, so if you did want a left and right uh, microphone, they're situated around the back on this one. The difference being, instead of being the large 6.1mm jacks, they're actually 3.5mm uh, mono jacks on this one. In the middle of that, there's a little a little wee miniature jack, and it says REM, or remote. I have a feeling what that basically is, you plug in there a little wired up remote control, and there'll be a little button on it. Okay, now I think that's associated with a tape deck. Okay, what you basically do is you have your little remote in there, and there'll be a little button on it, a little sort of button, which when you let go of it, the button pops back out. But when you press it in and hold on to it, it pauses the cassette deck, or it does something like that. And then when you let go of it, it uh, lets the tape deck run again. Okay, and that's what that remote thing does, I think. So there we are. We're not done, though. Just down there, we have a few more jacks. Now, it's obvious on a boombox like this, you uh, get the option of uh, connecting external speakers to it. So there it is. It says EXTSP. Okay, external speakers. So you can connect a set into this. You've got your left up, your top, your right down the bottom. And they can be anywhere between 4 and 8 ohms. Okay, but hold on a minute. This speaker's got 4 speakers on the front. Uh, this unit's got 4 speakers on the front of it, isn't it? Yes, it has. And so therefore, we've got 2 more speaker outputs as well. Super woofer, 4 to 8 ohms. You can connect uh, two more speakers into this. Okay. Your left and your right. And I'd seem to think coming out of there, it would just be the base frequencies only. Okay, so you'd have a, you know, an enclosure that has only a woofer in it. And they would be connected into those two. So if I zoom that out... You can actually see in that vertical section there there are four speaker outputs. Okay, and that is so that I'd seem to think you can replicate with external speakers what's on the front of that boom box. Moving down a bit then, there's a beat cancel. Now on this one you've got three options, A, B and C. Now that is associated with the radio. And from what I heard, when you're tuning in either on FM or uh, medium wave or AM, uh, there's a sort of radio interference where basically it sounds like a beating sound. Okay, and what that switch does is uh, it's supposed to either reduce or cancel out that beating sound. And that is the reason why I call it beat cancel. Now other manufacturers, they call it beat cancel, beat cut, uh, beat proof, riff, or all sorts of things. Okay, with this one you get three options, A, B or C. Okay. I think it's set in the middle on this one. 
So there we go. I've never experienced that uh, beating sound when listen, listening to the uh, boombox, so I've never had to need to operate that. Just down near then, we've got a battery compartment where you put 10 D cells in it. That's one option of powering it. Moving along, we've got the other option. Uh, the other two options. Okay, that one there is your AC input. I will just uh, get this, let go of this camera a minute. Right, that one down there then, that is your uh, AC input, right there. And let's look at a standard figure of 8 plug. Inside there, you can see it right at the front there, down there, there's a little switch. When you put that plug in it, it presses that switch in, and it enables the boombox for uh, mains power. But when you pull that plug out, that little switch pops up. And it uh, switches the boombox over the battery power. Okay. Now, there's a little tip from the Worldwide Ghetto Massive. Okay. Sometimes what happens is that button gets stuck down if you've had a plug in there for a prolonged amount of time. Okay. If that does get stuck down, you may find when you put batteries in your boombox, uh, nothing happens, even if they are new ones. Okay. The top tip is, is get a little screwdriver and press that switch in. Uh, a few times you might find you'll be able to release it and get it to pop up and then your boombox will run on batteries just over there we've got uh it's a dc input jack and that i think is 15 volts it says it on there there you go dc 15 volts and that is a negative center on that okay so you've got a range of options of power in this boombox mains battery or dc jack and of course, we've got a selection of voltages as well. There's your voltage selector. It is rather manual. So, before you plug the boombox in, you have to make sure that it's set on the correct voltage. This one, yes it is. Oh dear. This one it is correctly set because, if I look in there, we almost had that then. Let's get a bit closer. There we go. You can see it and it says 240 volts in there. Okay. So that is a voltage selector, you just put a screwdriver in there, rotate it, and it shows different voltages. And they are 110, 220, and 240 in there. Okay, so there we are, the voltage selector then. Let's zoom that back out. And that, overall, is the back of Sharp GF777. This handle on here is a metal one, it's actually a metallic one, chrome plated as well. Given a boombox this expensive, you wouldn't want those ends to be plastic like they are on some boomboxes. That's a good solid handle on that as well. And uh, yeah, chrome plated metallic ends, as you can see there, you can see them shining. And uh, yes, it's a proper me metallic handle that. Okay, and you've obviously got two antennas on this one, as you saw. There we go. I can detach that. There we are. Two antennas on this one. So there you go. Both for F, uh, FM, of course. And when you're listening to like uh, short wave or long wave, somewhere in there would be like the ferrite antenna core, and that's for picking up the uh, like your long wave and your short wave and things. Okay. With these, you can turn them around, of course, and up and down. But with, uh, when you're listening to AM, if you're not getting a good signal, you have to pick up the whole unit and turn it around to uh, line it up with the signal sort of thing. So, we've looked at all of that then. I think right about now, what we should do, just to wrap this up, uh, we shall uh, measure this one up, this big old uh, boom box. Okay. So we might as well leave that where it is, and we'll measure, because it doesn't matter whether we measure it from the front, the back, or whatever, it's going to be the same. Let's get the tape measure out, and uh, measure this one up. Now what I'm going to do, there are no controls on the top of this one, so we shall measure uh, measure this boombox, uh, two heights, one with a handle up, one with a handle down, I think. When I do the handle down one, I shall measure it to... Just above that antenna, okay, and then the handle up is obviously up there. What have we got then? Right, the handle down, we've got 15 inches 
or 380 millimeters and for handle up we've got 17 and a half inches or 445 millimeters okay what about the depth of the boom boxing there isn't much as you can see there but keeping in mind that we might be plugging things in here in those jacks and they do stick out a bit and also we've got ventilation on the back of it so you wouldn't want this right up to a wall so I'm going to allow a bit of space and a bit extra for the jacks on the back okay if you've got them in there so oh and also all of these if you've got some in there as well so I'm going to add a bit of space on to allow for all that lot behind there okay so we're going to measure it from the front of this grill to the back of there plus a bit extra for the jacks and things and for ventilation what we got them I would call it around about call it eight and a half inch then okay or 220 millimeters yeah, just might as well round it off to 220 millimeters but you can see on there if you took it right the way down to the box itself okay it's the uh, it's almost seven inch okay so there you go what about how long it is then it's quite a big one if I can get some more tape measure out because I'm gonna flip and knead it I'm telling you right ends to ends then I'd have to stand up for this one so I'm gonna fire the camera straight down I don't want to drop the camera, it's expensive. Right, what we got then? Well, just for laughs, let's round it off to 30 inch. Okay. Well, we could say 29 and a half then. 29 and a half inches. Or, uh, well, what would that be? Call it 750 millimetres then. Okay quite a big boomer there it is let me just put this camera on the tripod and we'll wrap this one up because what we've been looking at in this vid then is a sharp GF 777 let me just put the camera over there a minute I'm not sure if you heard that but it's all creaky case because it is, you know, it's obviously straight out of the 80s. There it is then. Okay, so what we've been watching in this one is Sharp GF 777. Quite a legendary classic box, that one. Well known bod, world bod, ghetto massive. Okay, it does pack a punch and therefore uh, it's got some recognition for that. Okay, uh, if you like that one... Big old thumbs up, please, so that I know that you enjoyed it. And, uh, yes, get on the comments box. Let me know what you think about this big old boomer. And there's four big old speakers there. That's, uh, you know, they say something, don't they? So, this has been another Wayne's Electrical production. 1920 by 1080p, full high definition, of course. Oh, I've got to go. Okay, it's getting on for about one o'clock in the morning, and yes, I like to look at boom boxes at that time in the morning. Oh, yes, I do. Okay, any time of the day or any time of the night, I like more boxes, let me tell you. Okay, I'm a member of the Worldwide Ghetto Massive, I'd like, like, uh, like to uh, let you know. Okay, I am a member of the Worldwide Ghetto Massive. So there it is. I'm out of here. Okay, as and when I can. Uh, Yes, we'll uh, get more videos done, get them on there on the channel, and stay tuned for those. Cheers for watching them.